Remarkably, the entire history of the Catholic Church is prefigured by the entire history of Israel in the Old Testament in chronological order. Pope Pius XII and Hitler are part of this amazing story and are pre prefigured in the Old Testament by Queen Esther and Haman. For a complete video with scriptural references and other source documentation, please refer to our video, Pope Pius XII and Hitler, prefigured in the Old Testament. Here is a short summary of the parallels between Pope Pius XII Hitler and Queen Esther Haman. The Book of Esther starts off with a very large, opulent, and long-lasting feast that was thrown for the princes and people by the king of Persia. The greatest down to the least were all invited to the king's feast, and all were able to eat and drink their fill. After World War I, the western countries of the world were rebuilding, and economic prosperity was growing. These were the days of the Roaring Twenties, in which feasting, drinking, dancing, and partying were very prevalent. All of society, from rich to poor, experienced a boost in their standard of living. During the feast held by the king of Persia, his queen, Vashti, was holding a separate feast for the women. Queen Vashti's feast was in a separate place than that of the king's. During the materialism of the Roaring Twenties, the Catholic Church was busy engaging in a political endeavor called Catholic Action. Pope Pius XI issued an encyclical Quadragesimo Anno, denouncing materialism, and he also established the Feast of Christ the King, proclaiming Christ the head of all the world and all the kingdoms. At the end of his feast, the king of Persia was merry with wine. His friends wanted to see the beauty of Queen Vashti. The king sent word for Vashti to come and appear before him, but she refused to do so. Because of this, the king was extremely upset, and his advisors counseled him to depose Queen Vashti and select a new queen. Through his promotion of Catholic action, in his denouncing of the materialism of the time, in his establishment of the new feast of Christ the King, Pope Pius XI was asserting the Church as sovereign and above the powers of the world. Towards the end of his pontificate, Pope Pius XI was very outspoken against Mussolini and fascism, which asserted the power of the state over everything else in society, including the Church. Pope Pius XI and Mussolini were in direct opposition to each other. With the deposing of Queen Vashti, the king sent out letters to all the provinces in his kingdom, establishing that the man was the master of his house and that he was to be obeyed. Then the king selected another queen, Queen Esther, who respected the king. She did not adorn herself excessively, but was prudent in taking only the ornaments that were advised for her by the king's eunuch. Fascism that was started by Mussolini in Italy spread to almost every country in Europe in one form or another. The power of the state was asserting herself 
and the endeavor of Catholic action met with severe resistance by most forms of fascism. After the death of Pope Pius XI, the Church sought to elect a new Pope. Eugenio Pacelli, an experienced diplomat and a reserved and cautious man, was elected as Pope Pius XII. He was not as outspoken as his predecessor, Pope Pius XI. Esther, before she was chosen to be queen, was the adopted daughter of a Jew named Mordecai. Mordecai would eventually be situated at the entrance of the palace. Esther and Mordecai's relationship was kept secret once Esther became queen of Persia. Eugenio Pacelli, before he was elected Pope Pius XII, was the papal nuncio to Germany. He spent much time in Germany and made many connections with the same people that would later become the resistance to Hitler inside of Nazi Germany. Joseph Mueller and Eugenio Pacelli formed a special close relationship when Father Cardinal Pacelli was witnessing their marriage, the marriage of Joseph and his, and his wife at the Vatican. Haman was elevated to the, to the first highest position in the kingdom. The king trusted his judgment and even went so far as to hand Haman his signet ring, so Haman could make any law that he thought was best. Haman used that ring to make the law concerning the annihilation of the Jews. At the beginning of the 1930s, as Hitler was rising to power in Germany, Hitler was looked on very favorably in America, even appearing on the cover of Time magazine on multiple occasions. His ideas about eugenics were applauded by many white, wealthy American people. In 1933, the German Reichstag handed Hitler full power to make laws with the passing of the Enabling Act of 1933. Hitler would use this dictatorial power to carry out his plans for war and persecution of the church in Nazi lands. A law was passed in the Persian Empire that everyone had to bow down to Haman in his presence. Everyone in the palace had to bow down to Haman when he passed or was in their presence. Mordecai refused to bow to Haman, which greatly angered him. The Nazis passed a law that made the Heil Hitler salute mandatory for everyone in Germany. It was used by all Germans from all walks of life. In Hitler's presence, the Heil Hitler had to be used. There are cases of Germans who refused to give the salute who are threatened with severe penalties. The German army, the Wehrmacht, did not give the salute. It was the German army that the most organized group of Nazi resistance was located. Upon hearing about the law that would allow for the annihilation of all the Jews in Persia, Mordecai dressed in sackcloth and threw ashes over his head. Almost all the Jews in the Persian kingdom did the same, many fasting, weeping, and even using sackcloth for their bedding. As Hitler invaded more countries, he was and as he sent more Catholics and Christians and Jews and others to the concentration camps, more dread would spread across the rest of Europe. Those in concentration camps would be given meager rations of food. They would witness the ashes of the dead falling from the sky, and in some cases were even given uniforms and bedding made out of burlap, which is sackcloth.
When Mordecai became aware of the plot to kill of Haman to kill the Jews in the Persian Empire, he and Queen Esther would communicate back and forth to the queen's eunuch, who would relay messages for them. Through this eunuch, Mordecai was able to request that the queen approach the king, even if it might mean her life. Upon hearing and seeing the atrocities committed by the Nazis in Poland, high-ranking officers in the German army and the intelligence agency sent Joseph Mueller to make contact with the Pope. However, Joseph Mueller could not approach the Pope himself, but instead relayed messages back and forth with Pope Pius XII through the Pope's very trusted aide, Father Lieber. Through this intermediary, the German resistance was able to request that Pope Pius XII approach the Allies, even though it meant great risk for the Pope and the Vatican. The king of Persia had a law that no one could approach him unless first called by the king. So for Queen Esther to approach the king with a request for him to spare her and the Jews meant that Queen Esther was putting her life at risk. If the king decided, he could have killed her for breaking the law. The latter entreaty, signed only a few years prior to Pope Pius XII, stated that the Vatican had to stay out of international politics unless the involved countries made an appeal to the Vatican. Thus, by delivering messages concerning the assassination of Hitler to the Allied forces, Pope Pius XII was expressly breaking conditions of the latter entreaty. Not only was he risking retribution by Hitler and the Nazis, but he was risking the possibility that the Kingdom of Italy could revoke the treaty and annex the Vatican, putting an end to the Church in Rome. Mordecai took up a position right outside the palace gate. Presumably, this is how he was able to discover that Haman was behind the plot to kill the Jews, and also was able to overhear the plot of the two officials who planned on killing the Persian king. The German resistance were well placed inside the Nazi Empire. Some of the German resistance were high-ranking officials in the Army Intelligence Agency, the Abwehr. These men were able to discover the plans of Hitler to invade Western Europe, and also had first-hand knowledge of Hitler's plans on killing the Catholic clergy in Poland. Mordecai was able to discover the plot of two Persian officials who planned on staging a coup and killing the Persian king. Mordecai, through the use of the intermediary of Queen of Esther's eunuch, was able to notify Esther, who in turn notified the king. The German resistance was able to discover the dates in which Hitler planned on invading Switzerland, and also France and the Low Countries of Western Europe. The German resistance was able to communicate this to Pope Pius XII by means of his assistant, Father Lieber. After Haman was surprised to find out that Queen Esther was a Jew, and after Queen Esther pleaded for her life and her people before the king, Haman was gripped with despair. While the king stepped out into the garden, Haman threw himself on the bed of the queen to beg her clemency. The king returned and thought that Haman was attacking the queen in his very presence. He had Haman taken away and eventually executed.
Shortly after Hitler was surprised to learn that Pope Pius XII was involved in the plot to assassinate him, the Nazis invaded Italy and occupied Rome. The Allies were closing in on Rome from their approach through the south of Italy. Pope Pius XII wrote a letter to President Roosevelt asking him to spare Rome and Italy from destruction. Hitler and the Nazis reportedly had a plan to kidnap the Pope before the arrival of the Allies into Rome. However, the plot never materialized and the Allies eventually arrived in Rome and liberated it from the Nazi occupation. Because he refused to bow to Haman and laid bare the truth about how the Jews would ultimately only stay loyal to God, Mordecai was hated by Haman. Haman erected a gibbet to hang Mordecai. However, at the last minute, Mordecai was saved from being hung by the king's anger and execution of Haman. Joseph Mueller was captured by the Nazis and Joseph Mueller was part of the Christian German resistance to the Nazis and was the liaison between the German resistance and the Vatican. Near the end of the war, when the Allies were closing in on Hitler, Joseph Mueller stood facing the hangman's noose. Ultimately, his execution was stayed. Soon after, Berlin was captured by the Allies and Hitler was pronounced dead. While Haman was banqueting with the, with the king and Queen Esther, Queen Esther revealed herself to, the, to be a Jew and, he, and she pleaded for the life of her and her people. Haman, seeing how much the king loved his queen, became despondent and utterly despairing about his fate. Hitler, upon discovering that the Pope was involved in a plot along with his own very army, to undermine and assassinate him became extremely depressed and was bedridden for days. After the plot of Haman was exposed and the king executed Haman and his sons, Queen Esther was hailed as the savior of her people, the Jews, in the Persian Empire. She was greatly admired, so much though that she was able to establish a brand new feast day that all the Jews in the world would come to celebrate. After the Nazis were driven out of Rome by the Allies, the people of Italy, particularly in Rome, hailed Pope Pius XII as their savior. So impressed were the people of Italy with Pope Pius XII that they were actually seriously talking about giving back the Pope temporal powers over Italy again. The day that Haman originally planned to be the ultimate destruction of the Jews turned out to be the day that the Jews were able to turn the tables on their enemies. There was celebration in the streets by the Jews after the news came that they would not be destroyed. The Jews were scheduled to be destroyed on the 13th day of Adar. The Feast of Purim came to be celebrated on the 14th day of Adar, except for cities that were behind walls. In those places, Purim was celebrated on the 15th of Adar. Hitler planned on and actually invaded Western Europe on May 10, 1940. The Nazis ended up signing the terms of surrender on May 8, 1945. The day of the Nazi surrender came to be celebrated as VE Day, or Victory Europe Day. This day became a national holiday in virtually every European country. 
there was dancing in the streets upon the surrender of the Nazis. However, VE Day is cele celebrated on May 9th for Soviet countries behind the wall of Berlin. Mordecai was on the verge of being hung by Haman. However, after Haman was toppled by Queen Esther and the king, Mordecai was raised to the former position of Haman, and Mordecai had great influence in the Persian Empire. After almost being hung by the Nazis at the end of World War II, Joseph Mueller became a very prominent politician in the rebuilding of Europe after the war. Joseph Mueller is also said to have been an agent for the American interests in the rebuilding of Europe. The Jews were scheduled to be eliminated on the 13th day of Adar. However, the tables were turned and the Jews were given the upper hand of their enemies. The Jews attacked the same enemies that were planning on destroying them. After the end of World War II, ethnic Germans who lived in European countries were badly persecuted and driven from their homes forced in many places to return to Germany. In, ret in retribution and revenge for the afflictions that the German Nazis committed across Europe during the war. Not only was Haman hung by the king, but at the request of Queen Esther and Mordecai, Haman's ten sons were also hung. And during the Nuremberg Trials, after World War II, ten Nazi officials were convicted of war crimes and were executed by hanging. In the book of Esther, she makes a prayer to God in which she announces God to be king over all and that others seek to make a carnal, earthly king. This is mirrored in the encyclical written by Pope Pius XI, Quas Primus. They design to change thy promises and destroy thy inheritance and shut the mouths of them that praise thee and extinguish the glory of thy temple and altar, that they may open the mouths of Gentiles and praise the strength of idols, and magnify forever a carnal king. Remember, O Lord, and show thyself to us in this time of our tribulation, and give me boldness, O Lord, King of gods, and of all power. The empire of Christ over all nations was rejected. The right which the church has from Christ himself to teach mankind, to make laws, to govern peoples and all that pertains to their eternal salvation, that right was denied. Then gradually the religion of Christ came to be likened to false religions and to be placed ignominiously on the same level with them. It was then put under the power of the state and tolerated more or less at the whim of princes and rulers. Some men went even further and wished to set up in the place of God's religion a natural religion consist consisting in some instinctive affection of the heart. There were even some nations who thought they could dispense with God and that their religion should consist in impiety and the neglect of God. When once man recognize, both in private and in public life, that Christ is King, society will at last receive the great blessings of real liberty well-ordained discipline, peace, and harmony.
Mordecai is convincing Queen Esther that she must speak out before the king, because God's people are in great danger. Esther is first hesitant to speak out, because she fears death from the king. Here's the passage from scripture. He sent word to Esther again, saying, Think not that thou mayst save thy life only, because thou art in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou wilt now hold thy peace, the Jews shall be delivered by some other occasion, and thou and thy father's house shall perish. And who knoweth whether that thou art therefore come to the kingdom, that thou mayst be ready in such a time as this? It's interesting to note that there is a great controversy today about whether Pope Pius XII did as much as he could to stop suffering during World War II. The very thing he is most accused of is not speaking out. Haman is one of the most infamous names in Jewish history. Hitler is probably the one most single notorious name in Western civilization. Haman offered to pay to the king a sum of money in exchange for the king making a law to kill all the Jews in the kingdom. The king said that Haman could keep his money. From the third chapter of the book of Esther, And he said to him, As to the money which thou promised, keep it for thyself. And as to the people, do with them as seemeth good to thee. And after World War I, Germany was forced to pay war reparations to the United States and Allied powers. However, in the 1930s, the German government stopped paying the reparations. The Book of Esther takes place in ancient Persia, which was located in present-day Iran. The word Iran comes from a word that is the same root word for the word Aryan, and is thought to be the, the same place where the Indo-European race found her ancestors. Hitler was obsessed with the Aryan race, and he wanted to make a pure Aryan race in Germany. The Aryan race is thought to have been located in ancient Persia. Ironically, in the book of Esther, the king declares that Haman does not have any Persian blood. From the 16th chapter of Esther, Now that you may more plainly understand what we say, Amon, the son of Amadathi, a Macedonian both in mind and country, and having nothing of the Persian blood, but with his cruelty, staining our goodness, he was received being a stranger by us. Throughout the book of Esther, there are letters that go out to all the Persian Empire and to every province so that all the people can know the words and commands of the king. This happens in the book of Esther on multiple occasions, and it's the first time in the Old Testament where such a system of letter writing and mass communication is used. Well, radio technology became available for effective use in the early part of the 20th century. Mussolini, the Nazis, and even the Vatican all took advantage of this new and very effective means of mass communication and they were able to reach the people with relative ease. And finally, there is this very interesting account on Wikipedia concerning the Nazis' own awareness of the parallels between the Book of Esther and themselves. Adolf Hitler banned and forbade the observance of Purim. In a speech made on November 10, 1938, 
Julia Stryker surmised that just as the Jew butchered 75,000 Persians in one night, the same fate would have befallen the German people had the Jews succeeded in inciting a war against Germany. The Jews would have instituted a new Purim festival in Germany. Nazi attacks against Jews were often coordinated with Jewish festivals. On Purim 1942, 10 Jews were hanged in Zunska Wola to avenge the hanging of Haman's 10 sons. In a similar incident in 1943, the Nazis shot 10 Jews from the Piot Piotrkov ghetto. On Purim Eve the same year, over 100 Jewish doctors and their families were shot by the Nazis in Czestochowa. And the following day, Jewish doctors were taken from Radom and shot nearby in Sidovik. In an apparent connection made by Hitler between his Nazi regime and the role of Haman, Hitler stated in a speech made on January 30, 1944, that if the Nazis were defeated, the Jews would celebrate a second Purim. Indeed, Julia Stryker was heard so to sarcastically remark, Purim Fest 1946, as he ascended the scaffold after Nuremberg. According to Rabbi Mordecai Nugroschel, there is a code in the book of Esther which lies in the names of Haman's ten sons. Three of the Hebrew letters, Atav, Eshin, and Azayin, are written smaller than the rest, while a Vav is written larger. The outsized Vav, which represents the number six, corresponds to the sixth millennium of the world since creation, which according to Jewish tradition is the period between 1240 and 2248. As for the Tav, Shin, and Zayin, their numerical values add up to 707. Put together, these letters refer to the Jewish year 5707, which corresponds to the secular year of 1946 and 1947. In his research, Nugroschel noticed that 10 Nazi defendants in the Nuremberg trials were ex executed by hanging on October 16, 1946 which was the date of the final judgment day of Judaism, Hoshan Rabach. Additionally, Hermann Goring, an 11th Nazi official sentenced to death, committed suicide, parallel to Haman's daughter in Talmud Megillah 16a.